Hello everyone and welcome back to the channel this week. Sorry I've been absent from uh, my YouTube channel here, but I've got a lot of things going on and, you know, quite frankly, summer was in full force and uh, eh, during the summertime, there's not a lot to shoot around here. I mean, it's packed with tourists and I had photo tours to do and just a lot going on. But I gotta tell you, this week we've got a great lens from Fujifilm that a good friend of mine, Mark Gardner from Summer Sky Digital Media down in Marshfield, Mass. He let me borrow this lens and he got this lens specifically for shooting uh, interiors and uh, architectural stuff. And it really is a specialty lens. And that's the eight to 16 right here, F 2.8. It's an amazing red badge lens from Fujifilm, but it's a beast and it weighs a pound and three quarters, 800 grams, almost two pounds, wow. It's, it's, it's a pretty heavy lens, but I have to tell you, it is spectacular and we're going to go out and shoot with it. And I'm not sure I'm going to get any, anything that's spectacular, but you know, I'm going to try and we're going to shoot some fall foliage. And I think you'll, I, th I think you'll like what I find. I, I hope I find some good stuff. Um, architectural stuff. We're going to try some of that as well and see how things go on the edges. Uh, see how bad the parallax is and see how bad the distortions are. But as I told you in the, um, video up in Acadia where I, I first used this lens, that the distortion on the edges is not real bad if the lens is nice and level. If it's nice and level, it's not bad at all. And I think you're gonna like this lens. And it's really expensive. <laughs> it's $2,000 new. That's, that's, a, that's a bit of a stretch for most people. So it's a specialty lens. It's a tool for professionals. And after the break, we're going to show you what I got and we're going to go out and shoot some, some shots with this very, very bizarre looking lens. A lot of lens element here. So off we go. Going out to take a look at this lens, the 8 to 16 F 2.8 by Fujifilm. It's a great lens. It's a real professional's tool. And we're going to go shoot some, I don't know, some autumn colors and a building or two and see what we get. Well, off we go. Yep. Off we go, see if we can get some interesting fall color. Who knows? It's just starting around here. It's not like it's uh, blossoming everywhere. But we'll see what we get. We've got a, a cool old building down here. Um, it's one of the oldest buildings on Cape Ann. We'll see. It's gonna be, I think it's gonna be great. It's gonna be a cool building to shoot, I think, with this lens. Well, this looks like our first shot here. Now, the interesting thing about shooting fall color is you usually like to have a, <laughs> a polarizer on it, but this lens is too big for that. So what I'm doing here is I'm shooting up a bit and it's at about, not at exactly at eight, maybe nine yeah, millimeters. So it's probably around 13 millimeters, something like that, full frame equivalent. And it's an interesting way of looking at it. It's up, looking up like this. So things are gonna be a little bit distorted and I'm hoping for that because I want the, the, uh, the leaves up here to be blooming out like this. It's gonna have a kind of a cool shot. So here's the shot here. And, you know, we got a lot of reflections going on, but basically that's it. We're going to be looking up like this. And we're going to hopefully get those nice leaves. And then down here, we're, we have this nice granite wall. So this Babson Museum over here is really... Very cool. It's a great location. Uh, light's a little high now. We've got some interesting shadows, but I'm gonna try and use the foreground to emphasize this building and see what I get. So let's try another shot here. We're gonna do a horizontal. I'm gonna move over a little bit so that I can use it at F8 and see what I can get. I'm gonna move in real close if I can, see what happens. I'll show you what it looks like. All right, so. What I'm trying to do is I'm trying to get a little bit of these stairs here. 
and get this building so that it's not leaning this way. So that means that I've got to level it up this way. And I don't know if you can see this or not, but this is kind of what I got going on here. And it's, uh, we still got my shadow in the foreground a little bit, which will have to be cropped out. So let's go up top here and see if we can find a shot that is different. And we're going to be looking back at this museum here. So what I'm doing in this shot here is I'm trying to make sure my edges are nice and straight. And we're shooting at 8 millimeters. And the cool thing about wide angle lenses is, is that you can get up underneath, underneath things and still show them like they're a canopy or whatever. And that's what's going on here. And as you can see, what I'm doing here is, is I'm getting it more in the center of the frame. We've got some of these tree branches up here and uh, over here. But the building itself is nice and centered, even at 8 millimeters, and it's going to be very, very straight. So in this version, I felt that the building looked like it was leaning over a little bit and I decided to straighten out a little bit in the light room and it looks much better. Okay, so I'm camped out under a tree here <clears throat> just to get out of the, rid of the harsh light and we're trying to see how this lens does real close up and I'm going to show you how real close up it is. So as you can see, we're pretty close to these leaves and it's a cool shot and you can see how close we are to the leaves. It's very interesting and I'm pretty sure I'm going to get a cool shot out of this. We're going to shoot one at f2.8 and I'm going to, I'm going to try and focus um, right about in here for this shot um, and see what I get for depth of field. I, I'm hoping, well at f4 I should be able to get all of this. But it's going to be, it, all this, all of this up here is going to be gone. And I don't really care about that. I'm just looking for to see how close this lens does and what the edges look like at f4. You can tell as the closer you get to your subject with this lens, the edges really distort a lot. As you can see, the leaves here are really distorted. So another really, really interesting fact about this particular lens is you've got a lot of blades in there for the diaphragm and every once in a while you get an opportunity for some sun stars. This is the shot with the sun stars and it's really kind of cool. So I'm ready to pack it in here with the 8 to 16 Fujifilm 8 to 16 f2.8 it's a beautiful lens, um, not really meant for this kind of thing, although you can use it for it, as we've shown. But honestly, this is a professional's lens to be used for interiors, architectural work, photojournalism. They're not going to use this thing. They use the 16 to 55 or uh, straight primes, which are much better for that situation. But I think I got some great stuff here, and we're going to go back to the ranch and show it to you on the screen and hopefully we'll make a great print out of it as well. So see you in just a bit. Well, welcome back from our little adventure over to uh, the Babson Museum just down the street from my house here. And it was uh, <laughs> enlightening, let's say. Uh, this lens is a beautiful lens, but really for landscape work, it's, it's a little bit heavy, uh, you know, pound and three quarters. But uh, I had a good time using it. The biggest problem with this lens and using it for landscape work is this front element is so big. Now, this lens has been out for a while, so there are aftermarket, um, what do you call it, uh, adapters that fit on the front of this to take um, you know, square filters. You can't buy one to screw onto it, unfortunately. Uh, it's not easy to put a polarizing filter on this, a screw on. You have to get a square one that fits into a holder. So like I said, there are aftermarket holders that will fit this lens now. But it really is a specialty lens. 
You can find them now used for about $1,500, which is actually a very good price if you're in the market for such a lens. But I wouldn't be carrying this around in my bag. I'd be carrying what I do carry, my uh, 10 to 24, which is an F4 lens, which is great. I really enjoy using that lens. Um, but I gotta tell you, my 16 to 80, I use it a lot more. So, uh, unfortunately, the photographs weren't all that great. They weren't, they weren't fabulous, which I was hoping to get some more color than there was. But what I'm gonna do right now is I'm gonna make a print for you, uh, probably a 13 by 19 on this uh, new can of printer here. Although I may, since they're not really that great, I might just make a eight and a half by 11 since it's really easy to do in this printer. And there we have it. This looks pretty close to the original. On the screen, I should say. There it is. Looks pretty close. So that's it for this week, and we'll catch you next time.